Okay, in this video we're going to take a look at the probability of more than one event occurring. So we're going to start by looking at what happens when we uh, flip a coin and then roll a dice. So the question on the page says, what is the probability I flip a heads and roll an even number? So in order to work this out, we need to think about all of the different outcomes. So we need to think about what our sample space is. So this one's a bit harder because we've got six outcomes on our dice and we've got two outcomes. Uh, on the coin but that means that you know I could have things like oh I could roll a tails and a three for example so I'll just write that as tails and three okay or I could roll a tails and a five or what if I rolled a heads and a five now if I try to list all of my outcomes like this I'll probably miss one so I need a more organized and systematic way to do this. So one way to do this is to create a sample space diagram. So what we would do is create a table where uh, along the top you have the outcomes of one of your events. So I'm going to put the dice here. So on a dice I can get a one, two, a three, four, a five or a six and then this way I'm going to list what can happen with the coin so I can either get heads or tails. So now I can fill in my sample space diagram by listing the different combinations. So in this square this means that I flipped heads and rolled a one, heads and a two, heads and three, heads and four, heads and five, heads and six. Now these six possibilities are tails and I rolled a one. Flipped a tails and I rolled a two. Tails and three. Okay, so you can see that I actually have 12 different possibilities. Now I want to uh, just take a minute to explain that when we're talking about these kind of events, these are what we call independent events, okay? And that means that they don't affect one another. So if I roll, um, sorry, if I roll a dice and then flip a coin, whatever I rolled here doesn't impact what I get on the coin, okay? So they're independent events. They don't depend on each other. So when you have independent events, your outcomes are actually going to be, I had six outcomes on the dice and two outcomes on the um, coin. So that means I have 12 outcomes altogether. And you can see that by the diagram here. Now my original question was, what is the probability I flip a heads and roll an even number? So let's take a look at where that happens. So heads and an even number, I could have this one here, heads and a two heads and a four, and heads and a six. So the way I'm going to write that is the probability that I do heads and a six, uh, and, sorry, not a six, and an even number. So this symbol here means and, and it's an upside down of the one we saw in the last video for or. Okay, so I try and remember it because that looks like the letter N, and there's an N in the word and. So the probability that I get heads uh, ahead and I get an even number is going to be three. There's three different ways I can do that out of 12, which gives me altogether one quarter. Now there is a formula for working this out if you don't want to draw a table all the time. And what that is, is the probability of getting uh, something and something else means you multiply the probabilities together. So we can see that the probability of getting a heads when I just roll, uh, when I roll, when I toss a coin is a half. And the probability I get an even number when I um, roll a dice is three six or a half as well. When I multiply those together, I get one times three is three, two times six is 12. So three twelfths or a quarter, which is what I got last time.
Okay, in this example, we're going to take a look at what happens when you roll two dice. So lots of board games, like Monopoly, for example, um, depends on you rolling two dice. And then you add the scores of those two dice together, and that's the amount of spaces you get to move. So in this case, we would get to move five spaces. So let's take a look at the probability of getting a sum that is greater than eight. So the first thing we need to do is we need to work out all the different possible sums and the different ways that we can get them. And the way we can organize our work is by using uh, a sample space diagram. So we've got two dice here. These are our two events that are happening. And along the top of the sample space diagram, we'll, we'll um, write down all the possible ways or all the possible things that could happen on the first dice. And then along the side here, we'll list all the different possible outcomes on the second dice. So obviously you can just get the numbers one to six on both dice. So I'll set up my diagram here. Okay, in each of these squares, I'm going to write what the total would be if I, for example, in the first one, if I got a one on the first dice and a one on the second dice. So my total would be two. If I got a 1 on the this dice and a 2 on this one, my total would be 3, and so on. So we'll fill in the whole sample space diagram. Okay, so we can see here that there are 36 different possible uh, outcomes. Okay, so we've got 36 different outcomes and we want the probability of getting a sum that is greater than 8. So greater than 8 means the numbers 9, 10, 11 or 12. Okay, so let's take a look. We've got four different ways we could get the number 9. We've got three different names, uh, sorry, different ways. We could get the number 10, two ways we could get the number 11, and then one way we could get the number of 12. So we could think about this in a few different ways. We can think about the probability of getting a sum greater than eight. So I'm gonna write it like this. Probability that the sum is greater than eight is gonna be the probability of getting a nine plus the probability of getting a 10, plus the probability of getting 11, sorry, and then plus the probability of getting a 12. Okay, so we said there's four ways to get a nine, so four out of 36. There's three ways to get a 10, so three out of 36. There is two ways to get 11, and one way we could get the number 12. So all together, if we add that up, we get uh, 10, out of 36, or if we reduce that, we get 5 eighteenths. So the probability of getting a sum greater than 8 is 5 eighteenths. Now obviously we didn't really have to break it up that much. You could have just counted that there are 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10 different ways of getting a sum greater than 8. So in this case it's important to, to see that like you can get a 9 by getting a 3 on one dice and a 6 on the other dice or you could get a 9 by getting a 3 on the opposite dice and a 6 on the other one if that makes sense. So you have to think about a 9 as not just the combination of 3, is, three and 6 but that you could get something like this. So on the pink dice we could have three and then we could have six. That's a different combination to this. Okay, so that's why we can get a nine, uh, a total of four different ways. So again, we could have had a four and a five or a five and a four.